Tonight on the CTV News, days before the Little Bow Health Center is scheduled to close, residents are moving out and an important visitor shows up. Plus, an accused war criminal hopes to fight extradition to the United States. And a center for at-risk teens honors the dreams of a Brooks girl who was killed six years ago. CTV News with Alicia Fieldberg. Hello. Health and Wellness Minister Fred Horn toured the Little Bow Health Center today on a day when three more residents were relocated to other continuing care facilities in southern Alberta. The controversial decision to close the specialized facility for people with Alzheimer's and dementia has angered families and many local residents. Terry Vogt reports. Ginger Heglin Dietz is taking her grandmother Agnes for a short stroll outside the Little Bow Health Center. It's a chance for another special visit with the spry 98-year-old. You like living at Little Bow? I do because they take me out and have me do things for them and I fold a little face cloth. Oh, you still are doing laundry? You can't get away from that. No. No? Uh, I love it. That's awesome. Well, Agnes seems happy here. She won't be allowed to stay much longer. Alberta Health Services is planning to close the specialized facility and has already started relocating residents, those under the care of the public guardian. Heglin Dietz has serious concerns about what a move would do to her grandma. Someone who's turning 99 this year doesn't have the six to eight months it's going to take for her to reaccommodate to a new place. So the fact that they're telling her she's going to need to move, she's going to need to get upset, then have to try to settle down and, and you know get into a new place, to me, they signed a death sentence for her and, and nobody seems to care. Seven of the 18 residents have already been moved to other facilities. The eight registered nurses who work here are told to expect layoff notices before the weekend. The rest of the staff will get theirs on Monday. People are starting to get down. It's, it's frustrating because um, nobody will listen. They might say there's no deadline, but I mean, they're, they're sure pushing them out the door as fast as they can get them out there. The union that represents workers here is not prepared to let this facility die quietly. Later this month, organizers are planning to send a busload of staff, family members and local residents to protest outside the Calgary office of Premier Allison Redford. When you're getting near 100, you're special. <laughs> well, you're special, I know. <laughs> Heglin Diet says the biggest disappointment out of all of this is that the Premier and government are standing behind what she describes as a bad decision by Alberta Health Services. Terry Vote, CTV News, Carmen Gay. After touring the Little Bow Centre today, the Health Minister stated the decision to close the centre would stand. But he said it wouldn't be shut down until all residents have been relocated to proper facilities. The comments came as a shock to some staff and family members who say in private meetings earlier, they were given the impression that there was still hope. We'll have the story on this tomorrow. A man accused of participating in 1982 massacre of Guatemalan villagers will be, in, will be extradited to the United States. 53-year-old Jorge Sosa was arrested while visiting family in Lethbridge in January 2011. He's wanted by the Guatemalan authorities for the alleged massacre of civilians in the village of Dos Aires during that country's civil war. Since his arrest, Sosa has been fighting an extradition order to, to the United States to face immigration charges. Today, a court of appeal judge ruled against Sosa's appeal. Justice O'Farrell told the court Sosa withheld information about his military background and he believes there's enough evidence for him to stand trial in the U.S. There's no word yet or on when Sosa will be deported. Lethbridge police are warning the public about a high-risk offender who will be living in our community. 35-year-old Mel Melanie Rose LaRondell was released from an Edmonton prison Tuesday after serving a two-year sentence for aggravated assault and drug possession. LaRondell is deemed a high risk to reoffend and poses a significant risk to harm the community. She'll be living in Lethbridge and must follow a curfew, report to the police station and not possess any drugs or alcohol. Another bail hearing has been scheduled for a 14-year-old Fort McLeod boy charged with attempted murder and arson. 
In March, firefighters pulled a 17-year-old boy from a burning home in Fort McLeod. He was airlifted to Calgary with life-threatening head and neck injuries. He's since made a full recovery. RCMP say the teen was violently attacked at the home right before the fire started. The accused was living with the family at the time. Last month, he was denied bail. Now, another bail hearing is scheduled for August 31st in the Court of Queen's Bench. The case will return to youth court on September 12th. In the case of a Fort McLeod boy charged with sexual assault and incest was back before the court this morning. The 15-year-old boy, who can't be named because of his age, is accused of assaulting his younger sister multiple times over the past two years. Today, a judge approved changes to the boy's release conditions so he can attend school this fall. The case is scheduled to return to court August 22nd. A man is in Calgary Hospital re recovering from serious injuries after a rollover west of Coaldale. Just after 4 this morning, emergency crews responded to the crash on Highway 3 near Broxburn Road. An 18-year-old Coaldale man was driving west on Highway 3 when the car rolled and landed in the south ditch. The driver wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was thrown from the vehicle. He was taken by Stars to Calgary with serious head injuries. The two passengers, 18-year-old women from Coaldale and Lethbridge, sustained minor injuries and were treated at Chinook Regional Hospital. Alcohol is not believed to be a factor in this collision. RCMP are still investigating after a truck drove into the side of the Vauxhall Library last week. Just after 11 o'clock Thursday night, Mounties say a man parked his vehicle at the Scotia Bank and went inside. The truck wasn't actually in park and it rolled across the road, crashing into the west side of the library. Nobody was in the building at the time, but police say alcohol is not believed to have been a factor. The Vauxhall Library is closed until further notice. And it's been really hot, Dory. I like it, but some people don't. So I think everyone's wondering how long is this going to last? Well, Alicia, you're right. A lot of people don't like it, but uh, we do have a bit more to get through. Today, of course, we saw a daytime high of 34 degrees. We've cooled down a little bit, and if you look outside, we have some instability on the way. But we get back into warmer temperatures for the next several days, but it looks like next Tuesday will be the coolest when we move down to 21 degrees with a chance of showers. But until then, daytime highs are going to still be pretty warm. I'll have details coming up in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Story. Ashton Moen once dreamed of a safe place for kids to hang out in the city of Brooks. She was killed before she could see her dream become a reality. Today, with the help of volunteers and the federal government, a youth center in her name took another leap forward in helping at-risk kids in the community. Daryl Rummel reports. This was Shirley Moen's daughter's dream, a safe place where kids can hang out and socialize. Ashton Moen has never seen it. In June of 2006, she failed to show up for work. Her body was found a couple of weeks later. It's never, it's hard to start healing when things just keep coming up. What started out in 2009 as a youth gathering spot has evolved. Beyond the fun and games, it can now house up to six young people with no place else to go and provide the necessities needed for a short-term stay, funded by a $283,000 grant from the federal government. It's unbelievable for us. We um, didn't realize the need when we started. And to have the community come behind us and donate, and yes, we've gotten government funds and stuff too, but you know, it just was overwhelming to see all them, all, you know, the community support we had. But there's a lot of people here who either work here or volunteer here, which is really important to help those people who are in need, and, and that's what this is all about. It's the intervention piece that's been really core, I think, keeping the young people off the streets, giving them a safe place to go for resources, for people to talk to. Between 20 and 30 kids use Ashton's Place on a regular basis. Volunteers help those youth get active in the community and find positive uses for their time and abilities. Shirley Moen says it's grown beyond what her daughter always said Brooks needed. I quite often think she'd be thinking, wow. The man responsible for Ashton Moen's 2006 murder, Colin Windsor, is set to be released from prison on February 23rd of next year. The Moens say this center is part of the healing process. They just wish their daughter was around to see it. Daryl Rummel, CTV News, Brooks. 
and Ashton's Place is volunteer driven and open to all youth in Brooks. A Hope BC teen that was missing for a month is in Lethbridge. 16-year-old Jessica Weber was last seen at her home on July 8th. RCMP believed she's, she'd hitchhiked to Wetaskiwin. Ten days later, a friend heard from her and found out she was in Alberta but didn't know where. Weber has family and friends in Lethbridge, but police had no indication she'd been here. Officers say Weber checked in at the Lethbridge RCMP detachment Tuesday and is no longer missing. The body of Calgary hiker Michael Huang has been recovered from Castle Mountain. The 42-year-old father went on a solo climbing trek in Banff National Park Saturday. When he didn't return, his family reported him missing. The three-day search ended Tuesday afternoon when teams found Huang's body, but high winds prevented the rescue helicopter from accessing the gully. Officials say Huang didn't fo follow a popular climbing route and fell nearly 60 metres. His body will be transported to Calgary for an autopsy. And now let's take a look at the markets.